Here on the farm with Miss Ada Scott. Miss Ada, what's going on? Right now, I'm weeding the spinach. So, uh, there's a lot of empty spots that we can plant more spinach, you know, and get rid of the weeds so they can grow more healthier and better. That's what I'm doing. Then we have co worker and a volunteer over there planting more uh, produce, more vegetables and stuff. Got to get the beds right so we can do more planting and everything. It's a job, but we're getting it done. So, Mr. Mobley, how long you been staff on the farm? Uh, it's three years this month, actually. Wow. It's been three years. I'm still learning, but uh, that's why I come to work every day. I enjoy what I do. I like to learn new things. We have uh, great staff, good management. And you've got a lot of volunteers too, right? We have a lot of help, that's right. How have we used volunteers in our work? Well, volunteers help with like all this planting like today. Uh, building beds, as far as like setting up these beds, compost, and weeding, just general farm maintenance. Extra hands. We appreciate them. We really do. Volunteers have been huge for us. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you both. is in the shop right now unfortunately we had some repairs that are needed so one of our co-founders of our organization mrs amelia harris in the red is turning her vehicle into the delivery mobile Ms. harris what you got going on today well today we are supplying first mount calvary with 131 salads um, normally we do a hundred but they asked that we could do 130 because their numbers have gone up and we've been able to supply just that. What we got going on? Well, we just got some freshly cut vegetables. We got some lettuce that we just harvested today. And we just put them in a the cooler to make sure they stay nice and cool and get the customer as fresh as possible. Okay. And what all are you harvesting today? Well, we got spring mix. We're doing okra. So we have fresh over here in this bag. And we'll be just turn out the field a little bit. What you doing, Miss Ada? Well, what I'm doing is I'm filling this car up. We packing up salad mix, 130 bowls. The center set. Uh, first Mount Cavalry Church. And then what will happen, where does this go from there? They give it away to the community with the lunches. Okay. Yeah, see this is going, it's the salad mix going to First Mount Cavalry Church. It's, I guess it's the day as they give away Tuesday and they add the salad mix with the lunches that they give away. And this is all salad that you grow and harvest here on the farm at Strength and Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Yes,
Hello, everyone. My name is Ada Scott. I'm one of the employees at Strength to Love Farm 2, and I'm also a resident of Sandtown, Winchester. So I'm talking produce for y'all today. And first off, first off, what we fill the trays with seeding mix. After we fill the trays with seeding mix, we make a little hole and we drop the seeds in the hole. Then we put a little bit more seeding mix on top. After that, we take it, take the trays to our nursery. We water the trays down just enough so they can germinate. And once they germinate, you know, they turn into transplants. Once they, they grow high enough, we transplant them into the houses, the high times. And we have created beds out of mushroom compost, which we take the transplants and we plant the transplants into the mushroom compost. And once they are, you know, large enough to uh, harvest, we harvest them for different people for us, the farmer's market, and different uh, restaurants in the Baltimore and D.C. area. And once that's done, you know, we enjoy working down there. So, you know, we have fun. And we also, now, we also do direct seeding as well, which we direct seed arugula, we direct seed spinach, and we direct seed turnips. So that's just a little bit about what we do down on the farm. Now I'm going to turn it over to our farm manager, who is Mr. Douglas Fuller. Hey everybody. Uh, my name is Doug, and uh, I'm farm manager at Strength to Love, and I'm unmasking. Um, yeah, I've been at Strength to Love since April of uh, this season, and um, We've been having a great time working, um, producing lots of different vegetables, uh, flowers, and really trying to beautify and build community. Um, I live in Sandtown, about two blocks from the farm, right by Gilmore Homes, and uh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful place. Uh, and you know, like uh, like every everyone, you know, it's like there's a uh, beauty, and we also uh, have a lot of work to do. But um, here's some of our produce. Um, we thought we'd play a little guessing game with y'all. Uh, depending on how well you know your different plants, um, you might be able to uh, know everything here. Perhaps not. This is pretty common. Uh, leafy, dark green, uh, very good for you. High in calcium and iron. Uh, traditional southern cooking. Um, we have another leafy green with these purple red veins going through it. And it is a cultivar of this plant, which is uh, both of them taste quite sour and uh, can be eaten raw or cooked. I like them particularly with uh, potato soup. It's really nice, gives a little bit of zing. Um, we have edible flowers here. Um, and uh, we might be putting some of these in our salad in a little bit. Um, Nice uh, purple, purple <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> we've got a beautiful purple head here. Um, and most people probably know what this is. Uh, another leafy green, this one has some bite to it. Um, and we're gonna be making some salad out of it in a minute here. Um, we've got some uh, little fruits here that'll burn your mouth if you're not careful. Um, two different varieties. And, oh, oh, I'm sorry, camera. <laughs> that one's for the compost. All right, we have some three different kinds of a very common um, vegetable that's sort of had its heyday this last decade, I believe. Uh, starts with a K. <laughs> um, and we've got some uh, flat leaf Italian herb that is uh, commonly used as a, uh, I guess, Garnish would be the word. Yes. Um, we've got a few of these beautiful golden orbs here, uh, shaped differently depending on how many rocks are in the soil. And uh, those are quite tasty. We've got this uh, voluptuous stout fruit that is a good storage crop and uh, 
is quite delicious baked with some butter. We also have some uh, purple and white uh, UFOs here, uh, which we'll store in the fridge for several months. And it's a good European uh, winter food. Uh, we've got these nice little wrappers of uh, pure delight. Uh, I guess you'd love it or hate it, but uh, I love it. And um, it's quite medicinal as well. Uh, and we also have another edible flower here. Um, this is very common on the roadsides in California, but here we cultivate it. And uh, the leaves are also edible. So if you think you know what it is, you can uh, make a mental note or jot it down and uh, we'll go through the names in just a minute. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing this <laughs> evening? My name is Carlos Mobley. And like Doug said, that thing that was over there is going to the compost. Well, I'm the guy to tell you about <laughs> compost. Now, <laughs> first off, compost is a great thing. It's a soil enhancer. So if you're going to grow great vegetables, you got to have a little something in your soil to make them taste all right, all right. So first thing I'm going to tell you about compost, you need two things. You need a thermometer to keep your temperatures right, and you need a good nose. Got to keep a good nose because your nose will tell you if there's something a little off with your compost. So what is compost? I told you it's a soil enhancer. But also, if you get deep into it, it's... Old food scraps, uncooked, which are like greens and your uh, eggshells. It also has brown in it, which is what we call, you know, the nitrogen. We've got brown, that's the twigs and the leaves, the fall leaves, things of that nature that are going there. And once you put all that together, it's a nice little science project for you to try. So you can move some, some reusable soil, something you can use over and over and over again. So... That's a little bit about compost. Now, not only is compost going on on the farm, we got some great guys, men and women that come out of the farm, young people. There's our workforce development program. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this short video. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Good morning. My name is Reverend Karen Wilson. I am the senior resource developer here at Intersection of Change and also working with the Thrive Workforce Development Program. So we are here, the young people are coming in one day a week to um, do instruction. They are learning the skills, soft skills that would help them get a job. And we're also very excited to have a partnership with Baltimore uh, City Community College where they will go and receive certifications that will put them on a path to career greatness. And so this is the class today. Uh, we have eight students and they're very promising. We have entrepreneurs. They're looking to be certified in forklift driving or customer service. Hi, you doing? My name is Javon Smothers. This is a program that we're in right now. Basically, they're trying to give us an opportunity to get jobs especially if you're struggling at the age that I am. I'm 19, everybody else here is around that age too. And we're just working with each other to embed each other so we can improve as an adult, to prove that we can fit into that world and be put in a place, we'll be being put through the test and this adult, and you know, just live a life. And so they're helping us improve on that and we help each other also. Very determined, hard working, and I am willing to learn I'm very reliable and I'm always there on the phone call whenever anybody needs me. So if you would like to call me or email me, my email is... So being a good salesman and being a good partner, I've got um, a business like mine and yours on the mat. For being a good candidate, a good customer service, and a good prosecutor. But I don't think he was actually like talking about um, more about the position and why he wanted to be there. I know you said um, asking him about is he for Brooklyn and stuff like that. heard he was and stuff like that. But I don't think I didn't hear if you said um, why he wanted to do it and why it interests me best. So on the spot, 
We asked you to do a 15 second elevator speech. So you did it. Give yourself a hand. And so this is all practice, right? Practice makes perfect. And so we're going to do this again. All right? And I just like the fact that you all seem to be um, receptive. I mean, to stand up, I mean, you got, you know, you just met Brother Hori. You know, so you're standing up in front of somebody you don't know. So I just want us to be mindful. Um, I hope that none of us has thin skin in the class because it's all about love and support, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's why I think it's good when you're going to say something negative, try to think of three positive things. Whatever it is, in any relationship, right? If you're talking about, oh my goodness, the sun is not shining. That's something that's not positive. Well, talk about three things. Well, the sun's going to come out, right? I'm not in a wheelchair. I still have food on the table. So sometimes it just gives us that attitude adjustment so that we're soaring like an eagle. I like the example of soaring like an eagle and not down in a chicken coop. And what are you interested in for your career? I'm interested in real estate at the moment. I would love to go back to college in order to pursue a career in psychology or forensic science. And how is Thrive Program helpful towards that goal? Thrive Program is helpful because we are able to get certifications. So they are pushing us in order to go to school and learning what we need to learn in order to pursue our career. Thank you, Ms. Hey, well, I uh, hope everyone enjoyed that video. Uh, we're going to get a chance to see how we can use some of these delicious fresh vegetables. This is all stuff that was uh, harvested uh, by myself at the farm probably about an hour or two ago, um, except for the uh, avocados, which are most likely from Mexico, the uh, Florida grapefruit, and I'm not sure where these walnuts came from, but they are delicious. This is also going to be my dinner time, so um, um, you can see I'm not wearing a mask or gloves, but uh, this is just for me. So stay safe, everybody. Um, I will show you though how we can um, prep some of this stuff. A lot of people feel like they don't have uh, time to cook, and personally, I'm a very lazy cook. Um, but I feel like if you start with fresh, um, high quality produce. And you know just a couple tricks, then uh, you can make something really tasty and nutritious in just a few minutes. So um, we've got um, two knives here. Um, this is like a French style, which uh, if you have one of those V knife sharpeners, you usually set up to sharpen a knife like this. Uh, this is good for cutting through like bone or um, heavy duty stuff like this butternut squash. Um, This is more of like a Japanese style vegetable knife, which is uh, quite inexpensive. It's a Kiwi brand. Um, it has a, a, a narrower bevel, so you actually wouldn't want to put this through an automatic sharpener because uh, it's really just too thin. But um, it's great for slicing uh, greens, onions. Anyway, that, um, so right here we have some arugula that we cut on the farm. I'm just going to chop it up into small pieces. It's already been washed and dried. Everything we have at the farm, uh, we triple wash, and we use uh, our first two washes. We use something called Sanidate, which is like an organic certified sterilizer, similar to hydrogen peroxide, and it uh, evaporates into like plain water uh, and air. Um, so, got some arugula right here. And often with salad, when it's really fresh, I like to just take a little bit of cracked black pepper. You can get this stuff now like at Aldi or uh, Save-A-Lot. This is from Save-A-Lot, like a dollar. But um, cracking it fresh really makes the flavor a lot better. And then this is a little bit of Himalayan salt. Um, so we've got the arugula. Um, we're going to smash up a few walnuts here. And you can either cut or smash. Um, this knife's sharp enough, I'm just gonna kind of go through and cut them into little pieces. 
Okay, and then we're going to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I usually like to pour it in the cap so you don't overspill. You know, with cooking, you can always add a little more, but uh, it's harder to take it out. And this is uh, some organic extra virgin olive oil from Aldi, like two bucks. I feel like that's like the super sleeper foodie joint. You can get some pretty high quality stuff there um, without spending too much money. We all need um, got some avocado. Uh, also, if anyone uh, likes to keep houseplants at home, I've had a lot of success growing these avocados from seed. Uh, you can just take this seed out and put a couple of toothpicks in it, set it in a glass of water, and you'll have a uh, avocado tree in a few months. Uh, they don't normally fruit if you keep them in the house, but they do make nice plants. So I'm just going through and kind of cutting this into a couple of pieces. Um, go down our salad. We're going to toss this in just a second here. And as far as utensils go, I don't really use much. I try to keep it pretty minimal. A good knife, a uh, wooden spatula, and a silicone spatula. About all you really need, maybe a ladle. You know what's nice as well? Um, I sometimes will take um, cheese grater and grate a little cheddar in, or Parmesan, or, or cheese if you're into that. Um, let's see, we have this to top it up. So, you know, I don't always put flowers in my salad, but, you know, if you want to treat yourself, or have a little date night or something, it uh, kind of makes it pop a little more. Oh, I forgot the tomatoes. See, that's okay. You know what? We work with what we have. That's uh, that's nice. Okay. We also have a couple of hot pots here. Let me know if I'm going too far over time. Um, So we've got a, a pot that's hot right now. Um, this is the basis for a lot of um, healthy meals, really. Um, would be chopping like an onion, putting it in there with a little bit of oil. Um, I do not have an onion today, but I did want to show an alternate way to cook collards that doesn't involve boiling them. So um, a lot of people cook collard greens, and they kind of boil them and boil them and boil them until they're, you know, kind of mushy. Um, and you know it's tasty i like it it's like traditional southern cooking but um if you want to retain a little more of the vegetable um a little more of the vitamins and you want to do something a little faster because you know it's going to always have time um you can just shave off the stems like that roll it up and then cut it into strips and i wouldn't normally use olive oil for this because that pan is really hot um this is more like a stir fry. Normally, I use canola oil or maybe um, sesame, um, even butter. Something with a little higher smoke point than olive oil, but you can use olive oil. We're just gonna have to stir it and probably. But normally, you'll do like it on on a really high temperature, and it only takes. You only have to cook these for about three to five minutes. Um, Mr. Fuller, while those are cooking up, maybe we'll switch over to Mrs. Harris for a few minutes. That sounds great. And then come back and check with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you, uh, farm manager and chef. I'll plug something. <laughs> so as you can see, there's quite a bit going on that takes place at Strength to Love. And I trust that uh, you got, you were able to receive and hear the various items and the various programs that Strength to Love 2 has to offer. I would be remiss if I didn't say um, to our endless number of volunteers, staff, partners, Strength to Love 2 sends a heartfelt thanks for your tireless efforts 
in which we could not have made it through this year without you. From admin, administration work, to harvesting, to planting, to using the wheelbarrow, all those types of things that have taken place from March up until now. Just want to say thank you from our hearts. Now, tonight, as I sort of bring all of this to a close, we understand the times that we are living in right now. Normally, our Strength to Love to fundraising event would have been held outdoors and we would have been in one of the hoop houses or the high tunnels and we would have been sharing a meal using vegetables grown right there at the farm. We would have been bonding with our regular friends as well as meeting new ones. Although the farm is considered um, essential and we've not shut down since the pandemic, some of our partners have had to close or even others that are yet purchasing from us can only order uh, less than what they've done in the past. And so tonight, we ask you for your financial assistance. No amount is too small. Although our fundraising goal is $10,000, whatever you can do to support us, we would be appreciative. It's up on your screen to make a donation. Visit s2l2.com slash donate. We also know that there are quite a few of you that are interested in volunteering. And if so, you can go on our website and there is an icon that you can sign up to uh, volunteer. I would be remiss. There is one more member of our team, Tyrone Cole Sr., who is responsible for transporting produce from local areas to as far as Washington, D.C. He is prompt, on time, and will get your produce, whatever you ordered, he will make sure that you get it. Hey. So I'd like to end this time. Uh, our farm manager has it smelling wonderful here. We have not had lunch or dinner, most of us. <laughs> and so um, I just want to close out by saying, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you, as well as all of us, peace throughout the remainder of this year and into the next year. God bless you all. And thank you for joining in with us for our first virtual <laughs> fundraising event. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're going to close out by going back to see what Mr. Fuller's been cooking up and uh, also get the answer to what were the different produce items that you saw earlier that are grown on our farm. Mr. Fuller, um, hey. how are we looking? Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, that's all that we've done now. Um, you know, Part of this, uh, using the high heat here is you just want to kind of sear them. And that's part of what that good smell is. You see how it's browning and kind of even a tiny bit of char on there. Um, anyway, nice. If it starts to stick a little much, you can always get a quick hit of, uh, vinegar, balsamic, or wine. Um, all right. Over here, we've got the answers to all the questions you didn't know you had, um, about these plants. So this is French sorrel. Uh, hold green, it up, hold it up, so we can see. Sorrel, um, it's uh, quite tasty. It's lemony, very nice in um, winter, like potato soups. This is a red vein sorrel, which um, similar, you know, they're different cultivars. These are um, Aztec or um, kind of Central American marigolds, um, and 
They're both edible, but um, they're also very important in a lot of um, traditions, uh, both in Mexico and Central America, and also in India. Um, this is one of our Salanova lettuces, it's quite beautiful. Uh, here we have um, two different kinds of chili peppers. Um, this is a um, jalapeno, and this is a cayenne. And this is actually a ripe jalapeno. So a lot of people maybe don't realize jalapenos, when they're ripe, they're red. And if you're a fan of sriracha, which I certainly am, this is actually, it's actually made out of ripe red jalapenos. So sriracha is not really Vietnamese. It's actually uh, was created by a Vietnamese immigrant in California. Uh, and these were, I think, the uh, jalapenos were the cheapest peppers you could get. And he used to pedal it on a bike. So anyway, this is uh, Italian parsley. Um, here we have red Russian kale. Uh, Lacinato or Toscano or Dino kale, different names for these. And this is uh, baits or curl beef kale. Um, these are some golden beets from our field. Uh, can you see these? Okay. And these are purple top turnips. Um, this is an astortium, which is also edible. Um, and here's some garlic. Um, this garlic is actually the one thing here that we didn't grow, but we will be growing this. Uh, we're about to plant it. Uh, probably this next week, and then we'll harvest it in the June. So, uh, I hope uh, something was informative, and uh, thank you all. And uh, so, thank you, everyone. If there's anybody that has questions, we would love to field them for you, either in written form or uh, if you want to turn your cameras on and and unmute yourself. Uh, I got our uh, farm staff working. My coworker Carlos Mobley here. And uh, we're happy to take any questions, but thank you all for being with us. It's, it's good to see a lot of familiar faces, volunteers, board members, supporters. And um, yeah, it's a challenging year, but uh, our work remains important. So thank you, everybody. Thank you.